Hey everyone, welcome to Subs Class, the show where I cover supplements, drugs, and other nutrition enhancers. I'm Andrew, the kinesiologist. Today we're going to talk about Kratom. Let's start off with a quick disclaimer. This video is for educational purposes only. This channel does not recommend the usage of any potentially harmful substance. We are not responsible for anyone's decision to consume Kratom or any other supplement. Kratom, also known as Mitragana speciosa, is a southeastern tree leaf that comes in the form of a pill, extract, powder, or tea. Kratom falls more on the drug side of the spectrum, being classified as an opioid. In 2016, the Drug Enforcement Administration voiced their intent to place the active ingredients of Kratom in Schedule 1 of the Controlled Substances Act. This was met with significant pushback. Protests and petitions were brought up against the potential ban of Kratom. The DEA withdrew their intent to schedule the drug, calling for more research to be done. Considering the amount of support for Kratom and the DEA's decision, there must be benefits to it. But with anything, there is balance. So let's take a look at some of the research that's been done on Kratom since then. Before discussing benefits or risks to consuming Kratom, we'll look at the biological mechanisms by which it affects the body and mind. At different doses, Kratom shows different effects. At a low dose of around 1 to 5 grams, it shows stimulant effects. Getting up into higher doses anywhere above 5 grams, Kratom starts to show opioid effects. These effects can present in either a positive or negative manner, depending on a range of variables, be it genetics, simultaneous substance intake, medical history, or current mental state. Going into further detail on the opioid effects will reveal both positive and negative elements to Kratom. So onward we delve. Anecdotally, the primary benefits of Kratom are said to be pain reduction, anti-inflammation, withdrawal symptom reduction, and caffeine-like stimulation. Research has shown positive results in rats in Kratom activating the opioid receptors similar to how morphine would. They conclude that the results provide evidence on the opioid and psychostimulant properties of Kratom. Research has shown dose-dependent positive results in Kratom's effectiveness in this element. These effects are so far seen specific to mice. Although more research is recommended, Kratom does show potential to be further explored medically as a prescription opiate substitute. For the most part, use of Kratom and its associated benefits generally come in the form of anecdotal evidence. Now let's get on to discussing some of the risks with consumption of Kratom. The primary side effect coming along with Kratom ingestion is the same as with any opioid, withdrawal symptoms. Potential side effects could include hostility, aggression, inability to work, muscle and bone pain, and jerky movements of the limbs. Another potential risk associated with Kratom consumption is liver toxicity. Similar to the additional hepatic side effects seen in the previous study, case studies reveal the possibility for risk of hepatic damage as well. While Kratom has shown positive effects as an opiate replacement, its use in the treatment of withdrawal symptoms is not without risk. Kratom alone has not often been shown to have severe outcomes, but in combination with other substances can be more harmful. In cases where Kratom is used to self-medicate withdrawal symptoms, contamination from previous substances can interact negatively with the Kratom. Kratom has been shown to have muscle relaxation properties, at lower or properly measured doses, this can lead to pain reduction. At significantly higher doses, this becomes muscle contraction inhibition. The level of risk varies depending on the site of inhibition. As with research into the benefits, there are more case studies and anecdotal evidence in discussing more risks. To quickly go through some more of them, research has shown the potential for pulmonary damage, cardiac damage, hypothyroidism, cellular toxicity, and cognitive impairment. I try and make it a point not to have bias in any of these matters and let research do all the work. As shown, there are benefits and risks associated with the consumption of Kratom, and research to back up arguments one way or the other. I cannot give recommendation to anyone to consume it or not. On that note, that's all I've got for right now on this topic. If you're interested in supplements, drugs, or diets, 
Keep an eye out for more Subclass videos. If you want to read some articles or check out other stuff we're doing, take a look at our website or Facebook page or check out some of the other videos on this channel. If you're interested in fitness training, we've got three workouts a week available on our Patreon for just $5 a month, as well as some personal training options. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye.